So, marginal benefit. Um, let's look at an example here. Let's say you are buying pizza by the slice. Now here's the thing, although you'll end up paying the same price for every slice, whatever price they've listed, you're probably valuing them differently. So let's say the very first slice you buy, you're really hungry, so let's say you're willing to pay $9 for that slice. So that's a high valuation. But then the second slice you buy, you don't value it quite as high. Let's say you're only willing to pay $7 for that one. And the third slice you buy, let's say you're willing to pay $5 for that one. So what these numbers are, are marginal benefit. So marginal, the word just means next, right? So the benefit you get from the next slice. And notice the third slice really doesn't taste as good as the first, right? And that's why our marginal benefit keeps going down. Our marginal benefit curve has a downward slope. Now this marginal benefit curve has another name more popularly known as demand. So this whole fuss about the demand curve, what it really is, is that it's the marginal benefit curve. It's the benefit you get from each extra item. And it usually always goes down. The more of any good you have, the less you're gonna value the next one, and that's why it's a lower and lower benefit, and that's why the demand curve is downward sloping. So what that means is if you take any given point, let's say this point, two comma seven, there's actually two different ways to interpret this point. One way is to simply say that if the price of pizza was $7 each, you'd wanna buy a quantity, the axes here, quantity then, and price we can say. So one way to, uh, 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 interpret that is that if the price was seven dollars you would be willing to buy two slices of pizza the third one wouldn't be good enough the first and second one are both sort of good enough you're valuing them but another way to interpret this point then is that the second slice alone notice not too totally the second slice alone gives you a seven dollar happiness now let's look at the marginal cost curve or the supply curve as we'll see here's where it gets a little a little funny because it deviates from our real world. In the real world, you probably expect that the more slices of pizza you produce, it costs less and less to make you know, each next slice because you're getting better at making them. Well, in the world of economics, we kind of have it the other way where according to all the assumptions, and really a lot of this comes from uh, Adam Smith's uh, original theories, and really you kind of have to imagine yourself in this fictional world where the next item costs more to produce than the one before. I mean, if you look at some of the old examples, it's like, you know, uh, if you're trying to make needles, the first few needles are pretty easy to produce, but when you want to make the 60th needle, you have to go out in the woods and get a lot more stuff. So really you have to spend a lot of time uh, finding materials and whatnot. So the point is, opportunity cost is factored in as a cost here. And that's why one way to think about this is that Sure, the first slice of pizza, let's say, only costs you a dollar to produce. But then the second slice of pizza, now you're kind of spending a lot of time making pizza. And really, at that point, it's probably more profitable to make salads or something else. And so that's why it's a higher cost, including opportunity cost, for making the second slice than it was to make the first slice. So that's why our supply curve, our marginal cost curve, is upward sloping. And the second one, let's say, costs $3 to produce. And the third one, let's say, costs $5 to produce, and so on. So this curve, then, is our marginal cost curve, also known as supply. So really, demand and supply are really about marginal values. The supply is the marginal cost. That's really, then, something that the business owner or the, su the supplier uh, has to worry about. And the demand curve is about the consumer, the benefit that the consumer gets from consuming each uh, each item and so wherever they meet is called market equilibrium